Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. Uh, so this video is going to be a tag video. Uh, Jen and Christian from over at Jen's Reviews from the Grave tagged me in this. Um, it is 10 movies, 10 genres. Um, I really want to say thank you to them for tagging me and thinking of me in this. Um, so um, it's 10 categories in your favorite movie in each category. Or at least a movie that you really love or a movie that had a great impact on you. A movie you want to highlight from 10 different genres. Um, so because this is kind of a horror channel, we're going to start with the horror movie. Um, and my choice for the horror movie is the 1975 Jaws. Now I was born in 73. And when Jaws came out, it was huge. Now of course I don't remember it from then. But it ran on TV every summer, and every summer it was a big deal. And I saw it very early. I was probably four or five when I saw this. Um, scared the crap out of me back then. Um, and now I look at it, and it's just such a good, solid movie. Um, all the way through, the acting in it is great. Um, the monster, the shark, Bruce, whatever you want to call him... Um, of course, the fact that it didn't work and didn't work right, so it wasn't used very much, or at least not nearly as much as what they wanted to use it, um, really adds to the, the mystery of it. It really keeps it um, uh, minimum usage so that you do so much more in your head than necessarily what's on screen. Um, but just the, just the acting in it, it's a masterclass in horror movie acting. It was a huge blockbuster, and... It, it's probably the movie that, that set me in the horror kind of uh, path at a very early age. So the next uh, category is animation. So my choice for this one is the um, 1973 Disney's version of Robin Hood. There are a lot of animated movies that I really enjoy. Um, uh, I love Hoodwinked. I love a lot of the classic, classic old school Disney. Um, I really didn't care one way from the other about the the '90s, the Renaissance era. That was just not. I was I was older and just didn't care much for that. Um, some of them are pretty good that I've seen in later years or seen. Against my, um, I won't say against my will, but that I didn't choose to watch, but ended up watching with someone kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, there's a good ones on that one, but the one that I always have loved is the Robin Hood. Um, great voice acting. Um, I love the classic style animation. Um... The, of course, the story of Robin Hood is, is just a classic anyway. Uh, so, yeah, that's my choice on that one for animation. Alright, so the next category on it is superheroes. Um, yeah, my choice for this one is going to blow everybody's mind. It's Captain America. But it's not the one you think. No, it's not that one either. And no, it's not that one either. 1979, yeah, 79, um, Captain America, the made-for-TV movie, sometimes referred to as the Big Helmet Cap. Um, 
so much fun. I still love this movie. I loved it since I was a kid. I saw it when it very first came on. I was, um, at the time I really enjoyed the Hulk series and this was supposed to be a companion to that. And I have loved it ever since then. No, it doesn't follow the comic books at all. Um, yes, it's very cheesy. Yes, it's very dated. Um, and yes, I love some of the new MCU movies. Uh, Captain America Civil War is probably my favorite of the MCU movies. Um, even though Cap's not really my favorite uh, comic book character. Um, but I really love that movie. Um, but this movie for me is pure nostalgia. Takes me back to being a kid, you know, um, laying in the middle of the living room floor watching the big TV. Um, so, yeah, that's my choice for superhero. Bet nobody else picks that one. The next one is drama. So, for me, for drama, there's so many good movies. Some that verge into other territories. Um, the Green Mile comes to mind. Great movie. Kind of veers into Supernatural, but the Supernatural elements of it aren't the focus of it. Not really. It's really the interaction with the people. Um, you could even, even Steel Magnolias is a, a classic to me. Um, my mother loved that movie, or loves that movie. So I saw it so many times growing up. Um. There are several other movies in the dramas, but for me, the movie that is pure drama is the original Twelve Angry Men. It's literally a movie consisting of 15 people total. You've got the 12 people in the jury room, you got the um, the bailiff... The uh, kid that's on trial and the judge. And that's that's it. It's 13 people in the entire film. It's an hour and a half long of people standing around the room talking. But the people that are in it are so epic. And it's so well done. The acting in it is so great. Henry Fonda. Uh, E.G. Marshall. Um, Jack Klugman. Jack Warden. Are just so captivating just to watch you could watch that with the sound off and still understand what's going on in a lot of those scenes uh so for drama that's got to be probably my top ever on that one um so the next one is going to be sci-fi um there's a lot of great sci-fi, a lot of, of high sci-fi, and a lot of lo-fi sci-fi. Um, I, I love Star Wars, at least the original trilogy. You can forget the rest of that. But I love um, several of the Star Trek movies. Uh, there's so many good sci-fi movies out there. Uh, Alien, Aliens. Um, that uh, um, Predator. Uh, all of those things are, are science fiction, uh, but the one that I chose is one that I saw when I, again, when I was very young, um, and really stuck with me as a movie itself then, but now I look at it and I see the depth to this movie, um, and it's Logan's Run. Um, This movie is such a, it's, 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 it's the absolute essence of a lo-fi sci-fi. At the same time, it's also got very high sci-fi elements in it as well. Um, it, there's so much, um, so much analogy in this script that can apply to, um, that was, that was, you know, um, a send-up of the government at the time. And it still applies. Okay, so, um, jump cut. Sorry for the interruption. Um, anyway, uh, Logan's Run is a, was a great analogy for the, um, every man versus the government. Um, if the youth, um, ran the world, uh, it's a very 
utopian society, but at the same time, when you look underneath, it's a very dystopian society. So, um, for me, it's a brilliant movie. So many layers to it, and that's my sci-fi choice. Uh, so my the next category is war movies. I couldn't choose on this one. I have two favorites in this one, and literally they are at the same level. Um, both of them are classics, and both of them are epics for what they are. Um, both of them have a very serious side to them, and at the same time a very light tone in other places. Um, so the first one is Kelly's Heroes from 1970. Uh, Clint Eastwood, Donald Sutherland, Telly Savalas, uh, Carol O'Connor, Don Rickles, um, Gavin McLeod. I mean, literally the list for the actors in this movie. And every one of those that's in it, even if you don't know their face, even if you don't know their name, you probably know their face if you watch a lot of movies from this era. Or even some TV shows. Um, of course, Carol O'Connor went on to be... Archie Bunker, um, Gavin McLeod went on to be um, the captain on the love boat from the 80s. Um, but he also did a lot of serious movies before that. Um, of course, Donald Sutherland is, is a legend. Um, Telly Savalas and Clint Eastwood, how can you beat that cast, right? Um, such a uh, The tagline for it sums this movie up. They went AWOL to rob a bank and almost won the war. And that's what this is. It's set in World War II and it is such a good movie um, in, in every way around. Um, my second choice for this one is 1963's The Great Escape. Loosely based on, a, on the true story... Um, of Paul Brickhill and the 70 some odd men who escaped from um, the German prison camp and the um, spoilers it's a the movie was made in 1963 if you haven't seen a 50 year old movie I'm sorry but I'm gonna spoil it the execution of 50 of them to send a message um, to the other prisoners not to do this kind of thing again which of course just made just steal their resolve because they were because they were were the men of that day they were the greatest generation and they were the greatest generation for a reason um and again the um the cast list on this one reads like a who's who of of the uk and and uh the us at the time i mean um james coburn um uh, Steve McQueen, Jim Garner, um, and of course the list just goes on and on. It just escapes me right this second. But, I mean, uh, Steve McQueen and Jim Garner, uh, Donald Pleasance is in, in a very good character role. Um, it's, this is the, probably the movie that I saw him in before I ever saw him in anything else. And seeing what he does with this role adds a lot of, uh, of gravitas to um, his portrayal of Loomis in the first two movies. Um, so th that's my choices for war movies. There's really not a whole lot you can say. These are classics and these are absolute epic level classics. And there's a reason for it. They are that good. So the next category is Western. Uh, also from 1963, my choice in Western is McClintock. I enjoy John Wayne movies. I enjoy Clint Eastwood. And I enjoy... I grew up on the Westerns of this era. Uh, McClintock is set in the West. Um, it's towards the end of, of the expansion West as far as... The, this area, the Texas, New Mexico area, area, not era, um, and McClintock owns a huge plot of land, and he runs the ranch on it, um, 
He in fact owns most of the town that's named after him. Um, so it's not your typical out on the range western. Um, there's an awful lot of humor in it. Um, Jerry Van Dyke is in this. Um, uh, Patrick Wayne is in this and does a very good job in this one. Um, sometimes he tried way too hard to copy his dad in some of the other movies. Big Jack. Um, but this one, he really is kind of his, him. Uh, uh, he really tries to play the character and not do a imitation of his father. Uh, Yvonne De Carlo, uh, Lily Monster, has a small role in it. Um, and it's just a fun movie. Um, it's extremely, extremely unpolitically correct. If you can't handle movies from the 60s, for those kinds of reasons, the treatment of the Native Americans, um, some are taken extremely serious and some are taken very lightly. Um, the rea the interactions between the men and women, it's pro it may not be for you, but for me, I grew up on this movie. It's one of my absolute favorite movies, um, and I really enjoy this movie. So, it's dated, but it's dated in the most glorious manner possible. So, three left here. Um, this next one is Adventures. So adventure can mean so many things. It's a very broad spectrum of movies. Uh, Conan would be an adventure. Um, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, things like that. These giant sword and sorcery movies. But a road trip is an adventure too. And my choice for this one is actually my all-time favorite movie. Period. My favorite movie of all time is The Blues Brothers. The greatest soundtrack ever. Uh, John Belushi and Danny Aykroyd. Um, musical legends making guest appearances in it. Uh, John Lee Hooker, Aretha Franklin, Cab Calloway. Um, uh, uh, James Brown. Sorry, brain fart. Um, all of those, these musical moments in it it's it's a musical too but it's really an adventure um two wayward brothers who are musicians get out of jail they go and they visit the orphanage that they grew up in um they have to raise money to save it because the city isn't going to provide for them anymore and they go on wacky adventures with a absolute ton of uh, of 70s guest stars in it and again you cannot beat the music So, for me, the long, full version, the director's cut, or the ultimate cut, um, that has all the little extra bits in it, I love that. But that's just me, and this is, like I said, my absolute very favorite movie. I can literally watch this movie and from beginning to end and start over. If it's ever on TV and I, and I run across it, I will stop, period. And I will avoid doing anything else to watch this movie no matter how many times I have seen it. And I have to have seen it at least a hundred times. Alright, so our uh, penultimate category. Um, two to go here. The next one is romance. Uh, I like a romantic story in other things. But I prefer a movie that focuses on other elements more than just the romance. Um, 
But my choice for romance is, um, yeah, 1935, uh, A Night at the Opera, starring the Marx Brothers. Um, you may not think romance, but this was the uh, beginning of the second era. The three Marx Brothers, Zeppo had left, um, the crew, the, um, the company, uh, to be their manager, um, and so you have, uh, you actually have two romances in this one, actually, because Groucho is romancing Margaret Dumont, um, as well as your two, um, main romantic leads, and then you have the other two brothers as, as slapstick comic relief, you have Groucho with the one-liners, the fast talk and double talk. Um, there are the scene at the opera at the end of it is a classic. Um, the scene where they're going over the contract in it. Um, they sail from Italy to New York and the famous stateroom scene. Come on in, guys, and leave all hope behind. But you've got to wake fast because you've got to get out in 10 minutes. Hey, Tomato, wake up and they're going to fix the bed. Say, uh, I'd like two pillows on that bed there, huh? All right, bring it. Say, there's a slight misunderstanding here. I said the girls had a wake fast, not your friend. He's still asleep. You know, he does better asleep than I do awake. Yeah, he always sleeps that way. Now he's half asleep. Yes, he's half asleep and half Nelson. All right, come yes? on. Yes? I'm the engineer. Come on. I came to turn off the wake heat. Up. Well, you can start right in on him. Wake up, Tommaso. <laughs> Tommaso, we're going to eat so. You know, if it wasn't for Gutlieb, I wouldn't have got this room. Just hold him there a second. Yes? Did you want a manicure? No, come on in. I hadn't planned on a manicure, but I think on a journey like this, you ought to have every convenience you can get. Hey, listen, I'm getting the manicure. Get out of here, will you? Did you want your nails long or short? You better make them short. It's getting kind of crowded in here. I don't know. This isn't the way I pictured an ocean voyage. I always visualized myself sitting in a steamer chair with a steward bringing me bouillon. Come on, Ricardo. You couldn't get any bullion uh, in here unless they brought it in through a keyhole. I'm the engineer's assistant. You know, I had a premonition you were going to show up. The engineer's right over there in the corner. You can chop your way right through. Say, is it my imagination or is it getting crowded here? Yeah. Well, I got plenty of room. Yes? Well, you can come in and prowl around if you want to. If she isn't in here, you can probably find somebody just as good. Well, could I use your phone? Use the phone? I'll lay even money you can't get in the room. <laughs> How do you do? This How boat will be do? in New York before you can get to that phone. I came to mop up. Just the woman I'm looking for. Come right ahead. You have to start on the ceiling. It's the only place that isn't being occupied. You can clean my shoes if you want to. Tell Aunt Minnie to set up a bigger room, too, will you? Do it. Ah, come right ahead. Hey, Tomasso, the food. We've been waiting all afternoon for you. Come on, come on. Um, so many comedy classics that have been parodied, ripped off, um, homaged, and everything else you can think of came from the Marx Brothers. Uh, it's sad that people don't remember them anymore as well as they do the other teams from that era. But honestly, um, the Marx Brothers, for me, are the greatest comic team in movie history. And this is probably my favorite of theirs. And the fact that you have the two romantic leads who are singers in the opera. And then you have um, the romantic element between uh, Margaret Dumont's character and Groucho. Um... So it's double romantic, um, but it's also probably one of the very first rom-coms. So that's my choice for romance. So the final category, number one on the list, is probably my second or third favorite movie of all time. And it's comedy. As a, The category is comedy. Um, as a general rule, there are... I dislike a whole lot more comedies than I like. 
Comedy is tough. If you, for me to like a comedy, um, it's got to just be, it's just got to really hit me. Um, and for me, Smokey and the Bandit is an absolute classic. Uh, Hal Needham's uh, former stuntman's directorial debut, Burt Reynolds, Sally Field, Jerry Reed, Jackie Gleason, uh, Paul Williams, Pat McCormick, um, Sonny Schroeder, who would go on to, and Sonny Schroeder and Ben Jones, who would go on to be on Dukes of Hazzard, um, Alfie Wise, who had at least a small cameo, if nothing else, role in pretty much every Burt Reynolds movie, um, and he's the little short dude, um, <laughs> Uh, well, he was in Cannonball Run as, uh, one of the guys in the pickup truck. He was in, um, all, in the first two Smokey and the Bandit movies as cops. He was in, but, it, you know, he's, he's not a name that you'll know, but he's one of those faces that when you see him, um, you'll know him. But for me, that's my all-time favorite, um, comedy, if you want to separate it out that way, because... Technically, the Blues Brothers is a comedy. Technically, um, A Night at the Opera is comedy. But this is a, a really great comedy, one I grew up with. Again, I'm born in 73, so this was one of those things. Um, and, you know, state flag here. I was born in Alabama, raised in Alabama, and Southern. And Smokey and the Bandit was, is about as Southern fried as you can get. And it's one of my all-time favorite movies. Um, and as far as a straight, and it could technically be an adventure, it could technically be an action, great car stunts, beautiful car, gorgeous rig, um, hell, I even like the red Cadillac, but, so that's my list, guys, um, I really want to say thank you to anybody who has watched this far, um, uh, thank you to Jen and Christian for tagging me in it, you sorry uh, love you guys. Really, I do. Um, as far as me tagging anybody, I'm not real sure who has not hasn't done this or who's going to watch this video and actually do it. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Charles Cochran and, um, Dulb, D-O-O-L-B-666, uh, John, uh, I'm tagging you guys in it. If you guys want to do it, great. Anybody else who wants to do it, leave a link, uh, to your video down below and tag me. Uh, or, you know, let me know that you ta that you took my tag, and, um, see so yeah, ya guys, that's my list, and, uh, as always, um, links down below, I will have Jen and Christian, since they tagged me, their link will be first, uh, Teespring link, Patreon link, buy me a coffee, Amazon, uh, my fiance has a Vented account, if you would like to, um, pick up something from her, uh, advocacy links, and, um, yeah, so you guys have a good night, good day, good life, good minute, whatever, uh, anyway, y'all have a good one, and, uh, we'll see you in the next one. We have a big chance, a big chance to make a run for some big bucks, 80,000. He's pounded down, loaded up and trucking. Are we gonna do what they say can't be done? We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm East Pound, just watch no bandit run. Keep your foot hard on the pedal, son, never mind them brakes. Let it all hang out, cause we gotta run to make. The boys are thirsty in Atlanta, and there's beer in Texarkana. And we'll bring it back no matter what it takes. He's pounding down, loaded up and trucking. Are we gonna do what they say can't be done? We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm he's found just watch old bandit run.
trucking. Are we gonna do what they say can't be done? We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm east bound up, watch our bandit run. Old Smoke has got them ears on, he's hot on your trail. And he ain't gonna rest till you're in jail. So you've got to dodge him, you've got to duck him, you got to keep that diesel trucking. Just put that hammer down and give it hell. He's bound to die, load it up and truck it. Are we gonna do what they say can't be done? We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm east bound up, watch your bandit run.